Okay guys, so in this section we're just going to have a bit of a recap of what we covered previously and we saw that when we do any kind of configuration changes on the Junos OS this is stored in something called the candidate configuration and only takes effect on the actual device if we commit. So this allows you to apply multiple configuration changes to the running configuration at the same time. Now, the candidate configuration is like the temporary configuration that you're configuring and upon a commit, then that becomes the permanent active configuration on the device. And the Junos device maintains a configuration history storing up to 50 previously configured active configurations. And you could use like a rollback command to navigate through those configurations. So let's just have a look at the box. And you can see here that I've um, connected a Windows PC to it, but let's just log into the actual device. All right, it's taken us into a shell prompt. So we do CLI and I will log in. Oh, who am I logged in as? All right, so I'm logged in as root. And if I do a show system commit, we can see that um, we have 10 configurations that we can roll back to. Now, if I was to do some configuration, we're currently in operational mode. I'm going into configuration mode here. And if I do a show compare, show pipe, compare, we see that we have no configuration currently in the candidate configuration. So let me do some configuration. Edit interfaces, GE 00.0. .0. All right, let me say set family inet address. It's very slow today, to be honest. I'm not sure if it's the internet connection. Let me just make it an IP address of 1.1.1.1 slash 32. Now, if I do a show pipe compare, we can see that this is going to be added to our active running configuration, but currently it's only in the candidate configuration. So let me say top and let me again say show compare. And this is all the configuration that will be added if I was to do a commit from the candidate configuration into the running configuration. Now, if I didn't want to commit this, if, if you were to put this on another vendor's device, this would just take automatically, but not so on the Juniper. To actually send this from the candidate configuration into the active configuration, you need to type commit. If I wanted to just wipe this, I could say rollback zero, press enter. Now, if I say show pipe compare, there is nothing in the candidate configuration. And this is how you actually uh, manage to delete any configuration from the candidate configuration before you commit. All right, as you've probably seen from my actual graphic, I've managed to add a Windows server. So to be able to get SSH access into our device. Now, if I jump onto our actually Windows device and look at the IP address, couple of ways I could do it. I could either do it from here, but if that doesn't open up, let's go into a command prompt and just do an IP config slash all. And we can see that the IP address of our device here is 192.168.1.1. And this is actually connecting into our management interface. So let's do that configuration. Run show interface fxp0.0 .0. and it doesn't look like we have any configuration so let's just say show interface fxp0.0. .0. .0. No, there's no current configuration on it so if I say edit interfaces fxp0.0 .0, .0. and if I say delete DHCP if it has any DHCP settings on it. No, it doesn't so set family inet address as 192.168.1.2 slash 24. And also what I need to do, I need to set up some SSH for the actual box. So if I say set system services, rather than set, let me say edit 
system services SSH then set root login allow I'm gonna make it SSH version 2 so set protocol version v2 and I think that's all I will need actually if I want to go back just one step in the configuration I will say up and let me say show from here so SSH is enabled root login allow and protocol version version 2 I've already got a user Ibrahim and that's what I will probably use to log into the device from our Windows box so if I say top show then pipe compare and this will show me all of the configuration that's in the candidate config so we've got edit system services SSH and we've also added an IP address to our management interface of so FXP0 which is exactly what I want let me say commit and quit which will quit us out of operational mode now if I say show interfaces terse I have an IP address under our management interface so I should be able to ping 192.168.1.1 which I can so let's jump jump back onto our Windows box and it will all be clear why I'm doing this in a second but if I jump onto our Windows box and open up a putty session so let me close this command box here and open up putty and I should be able to SSH into 192.168.1.2 and log in as Ibrahim. Excellent. I've managed to log into the box as Ibrahim. Now, if I jump onto the actual box rather than the Windows session and I say show system users. Guys, I have a request from you. If you're enjoying the free content, I'm looking to increase my subscriber count to 4,000 subscribers by June. But I can only do that if you give me the play special. Do you want to know what the play special is? Press like and yeah, subscribe. Okay, back to the video. You can see that we have two users actually logged into the box, both as super users. So we have the root user, which is me on this box. And on the Windows box, we have Ibrahim, who has logged on. And the reason why I'm telling you all of this is by default, there can be multiple users that can SSH into the device at the same time. And they're also able to enter the configuration mode and commit changes. Now, this can be a problem because if someone else has done a change on the box and you commit it, you will commit your change and you will commit their change. And just to demonstrate that, if I go on to edit and if I said, let's just do a quick configuration of changing the host name. So let's set system host name to router coach vmx-1 which is something different so i've put that now if this guy over here of the root user unwittingly knew even though he ignored this message the configuration has been changed but not committed and he was like oh yeah 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 i'm just going to commit my change i've done a change and i press commit you can see that the username has changed so we would commit our changes and the other person's changes. Now, if they've messed up the box and you commit their changes, it could be the whole world of trouble. So there is a way around this. And what we can do, we can use something called either the configure exclusive command, which will only allow one person to edit the configuration, which would be a bit annoying because if I'm in edit exclusive or configure exclusive and someone else wants to do a change in the box, they're not gonna be able to. And I'm gonna demonstrate that here. So if I exit from here and I say configure exclusive, enter, and I'm going about my merry way, edit interface GE 00.0, set family INET address of 100.1.1.1. I'm merrily going along. But then I um, don't come out of edit exclusive and let me exit from here. And then Ibrahim wants to jump in. You see that edit exclusive has been used. So if I now go, oh, well, I just need to make a quick change. I'm going to set the system host name to its correct host name, VMX1. And I do a commit. It says, ever, the configuration database is locked. I cannot make any changes on the box until Ibrahim comes out. 
um, until this root user comes out. Now, if they go away and leave the box for a day, two days, you're not going to be able to make any changes on this box. You can't do any configuration changes, which is the annoying way. The other way is that if we use the configure private command, which will only commit my changes and the other person will only commit their changes. So if I exit out of this top and I say exit and I just say yes. Now, if this person wanted to do a commit, the commit has completed, even though I didn't actually change the name that time and I exit out of this, what I could do here is if I say configure private, it's only gonna commit my changes. Let's demonstrate this. So on this side, I'm also gonna say configure private. On this side, I'm going to say set the system host name to VMX1, dash one like this, yeah. And on this side, let me just do a, um, before I go over there, one show interface terse. You see that there's no configuration on GE00. And on this side, I'm gonna say edit interface GE00-0, set family inet address to 100.1.1.1 slash 24. Now, if I do a commit from the root here, what I'm expecting to see is only the host name will change. Nothing will happen to the interface until Ibrahim changes it on his side. So I'm gonna say a commit. So we see that the host name has changed to VMX1. Let's verify if it's committed Ibrahim's changes. Run show interface terse, and it has not. GE000 has not changed. But if I now press enter, you see that the host name has changed. But if I now say a commit, oh, and there's another thing, you can only commit from the top of the private configuration. So I have to say top here and then say commit run back over to root, I never changed it, yeah? But we're going to verify this. Run show interfaces terse, and it has committed Ibrahim's changes, but he committed them. I did not commit them for him. So you've got commit, which will, which will commit everybody's change on the box. Then you have configure exclusive, only a single user at a time can commit their changes. Or you have configure private, which is the best option, which means everybody can commit and save their own individual changes without committing everybody else's changes. The main issue is if you use edit exclusive, nobody else will be able to configure any changes on the box and you lock out the system. You also have the option of um, doing up in the configuration and there's a rollback. So we've gone over the rollback, we've gone over the configure private and configure exclusive. Another thing that I want to show you is if I say something like edit interfaces GE000.0 .0, or let me say zero unit zero family inet address. Did it let me do that? No. Let me say um, 1.1.1.1. And it doesn't matter with the inet addresses. You could put as many IP addresses on it as you want. But you see here, if I count, so I've got address as one, Family INET is two. If I want to go all the way back to edit interfaces, GE000, I think if I just say up and the amount of numbers. So if I say up three, yeah. See how it took me up three hierarchies? That's one. This family INET was two. And this unit zero was three. I done up three and it took me all the way back to just edit interfaces GE000. If I wanted to go all the way to the top of the hierarchy, I just say top and it takes me back to just the edit command here. So what I'm going to do, um, run show interfaces terse. I'm just gonna show you that this can take as many IP addresses as you want. On Cisco and other devices, I think it just has the primary interface and the secondary. It can't really take any much others, but on Juniper, it's not the case. So GE000.0, family inet address, let's say 200.2.2.2 slash 24 and see if it will show me that. Yes. And if I said set address as 50.50.50.1 slash and if I say show here, you see it will take these. And if I do a commit, it's going to actually, again, I'm in private. I keep forgetting I'm in um, configure private. If I say commit, edit interfaces, unit, inet, warning statement already exists. Let me do a commit check on that. Top, commit.
to make the check. A holster dress isn't allowed with any other dresses on the same family, all right? So it's just because I've got a holster dress. So I need to have them all as slash 24. So edit interface GE000.0, delete family INET address of 50.50.50.1 slash 32, top. Let's do a show, compare. Lots of IP addresses there. Let's do a commit check. Good, and we're going to commit that. Then we do a run show interface terse, and we can see one, two, three IP addresses all under the same interface. All right, that's it for this section. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, before I see you in the next one, it will be question time. Question one. The following prompt on the device means that you are in which mode? Question two, if you save the configuration with a commit and quit, you are taken from configuration mode to? Question three, the temporary configuration of the device before a commit is issued is called the Question four, if you issue a configure private when configuring the device, this means? Question five, if you issue a configure exclusive when configuring the device, this means? Question six, if you issue a configure private when configuring the device, this means? Question seven, to go back two places in the configuration command, what command can you issue?